Hey everybody, welcome to Wine, Women, and Writing. This is Pamela Fagan Hutchins, and you have reached the show where I talk to other authors about their authentic, complex female characters. And with any luck, I'm able to pry into those authors' psyche and find out the things that exist that make those characters jump off the page for us. And we do it with a little bit of oversharing a reverence, occasional profanity, and depending upon the time of day, a shot of whiskey, it's a little too early in the morning or midday for that today. But I am really excited this week is release week uh, on Sunday for me for Dead Pile, Maggie number three. So be sure you're catching up with Livewire, Maggie one, so that you can be ready for Maggie. And it's also your last week to enter the giveaway for the Labradite ring, smaller version of this one that was based on the one I used when I was writing the books, the Muse ring, if you will. So go out to my website for that. But more importantly, today we have the rescheduled and highly anticipated visit from Meredith Wild. And I cannot tell you, I'm so excited. Meredith, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Pamela. Well, uh, last week I was so excited. I think I accidentally broke the internet in Florida because you weren't able to hear <laughs> me. But I read, um, I, re I got started on the Red Ledger um, series in anticipation for you coming. And I can't wait to talk to you about that. First, I want to make sure people understand that not only is Meredith awesome and patient for redoing this interview when we you know, broke the internet. But she's also a number one New York Times bestselling author. You may know her from the Hacker series if you haven't read the Red Ledger series yet or some of her other great books. And she's also the founder of Waterhouse Press. So we're going to talk about a lot of cool things today with Meredith. So I guess the most important question since the name of the show is Wine, Women, and Writing is if, if you and I were actually drinking right now, what would it be, Meredith? What would you be having? Well, I'm a whiskey girl. <laughs> Any particular <laughs> Jack Daniels is my go to, but <laughs> Jack. But if we were drinking wine, I like wine too. Uh, I've actually, since moving to Destin, Florida, I've discovered a wine, a Pinot Noir called Mayomi, and uh, I call it the official Destin Housewives wine. But it's a very tasty bottle. <laughs> <laughs> well, very cool. I have. I kind of run this. Um, this podcast like Pamela's Personal Book Club. You know, I go around and cherry pick the authors I enjoy reading and the books that I really want to get to. And, and, and I found that book clubs pretty much are fueled by booze. They're just, they're booze clubs, you know, tag on books with them. So yep. <laughs> what would now your, your protagonist, um, your female protagonist in Red Ledger is Isabel. What about Isabel? What would she be drinking? Or do we know? Oh, well, uh, since the story starts in Rio, uh, they have a, uh, they have a, a soft spot for Caprinhas, which is the kind of the classic Brazilian rum drink. So they, plenty of those show up throughout the series. Excellent. Well, that sounds good to me too. I love a little rum. Um, I really, really have enjoyed watching you as you have um, progressed through your very rapid um, career and enjoyed reading the books. So on hold up for those that see this on video, those of you that are on podcast, um, you really miss out. You should check this out on YouTube because you get to see some, not only that I blow dry my hair occasionally, but you get to see the covers. So I was holding up the um, Red Ledger Reborn here. So as far as, as your books go, there seems this, there's just insane popularity, Team Wild and all these people that really get out and support you. What do you think the secret sauce is in a Meredith Wild book? This may be really putting you on the spot, but what, what kind of reader experience are you trying to create when you sit down behind, I guess your laptop? Are you a laptop writer? Yeah, I am. Um, well, you know what? From the very first book, Hardwired, my goal was to have a really tight story and to have people turning the pages. And I'd say that's probably one of the descriptors that people use the most when they're talking about my books, that they're page turners. Um, every sentence matters. I, I don't put a lot of fluff in my books. Um, you know, I don't want people to get distracted or get bored. Uh, I want them eager to find out what happens next. And that's just kind of the pace of my writing in general. Um, some books more than others, like The Red Ledger, obviously, is heavily suspense, so it's like very, very fast paced. 
Um, but yeah, I'd say that kind of characterizes my writing. So I, I would agree with you after having read it and I, I have cheat sheet here. For, again, for those on video, I really read the books, make notes, and prepare to ask questions as if it's a book club. So just tell us a little bit about The Red Ledger before we dive a, a little more into the details. For those that haven't read it yet, and shame on you if you hadn't, I've been telling you guys for months that Meredith was coming. Sure. Uh, well, the very short, you know, uh, one line, uh, one liner is, uh, it's kind of a sexy Jason Bourne. Uh, when people come to my table at signings, that's, that's, that's my one line for it. Um, but it started out actually with um, a dream uh, I had like, three, well, maybe like three, four years ago. And uh, I just had this strange dream, which is basically the first scene of the first book. And it took me a long time to kind of come back to the story and make, make room for it with everything else I had going on. But um, the premise of it is, uh, it's a story about Tristan Red, who is a hitman mercenary, uh, who is based in Rio de Janeiro. And he is uh, lethal and uh, kind of unemotional in general, um, in large part because he's missing a huge part of his past. He uh, basically only has memories from the past three years. Um, and when he's sent to complete his next mission, uh, he, uh, you know, does what he would normally do, prepares, you know, to, to take somebody out. And um, this particular person happens to be a woman from his past and he doesn't recognize her, but there's a moment, which I won't spoil, um, in the first book, which is a little saucy, uh, where he, he gets a pretty strong hint that she may know who he is. Um, and thus begins a pretty um, heart-pounding journey uh, with, you know, lots of villains, lots of enemies, lots of danger, and um, some, some good saucy stuff, too. So it came in a dream. Man, that is, that's awesome. If all ideas came to us, you know, that easily and I say easily then it takes what you know years for you to flush it out and, and get it going right. but that's pretty awesome so with respect to the saucy part yes Meredith's books are saucy <laughs> in a good way like your husband wants you to read these books way or your wife wants you to read these books um and another thing about these books besides the exoticness of them I loved I lo they kind of read to me somewhat like when you get into the different um episodes it's like a travelogue, you know, you're in these exotic places and then you're somewhere else. And I loved that element of it. Is, is that the Jason Bourne feel that you were shooting for intentionally or, or where, is that your love of travel? Yeah, it's definitely mine. And I, you know, I curse myself for it because I don't, I, I don't always intend to send my characters all over the world, but then they just end up I'm like, and then we're going to go to Paris. And then we're going to go do that. And, you know, that's a, it's a hard thing, a hard position to put yourself in as a writer when you're, you know, pulling a story together because you have setting and you have characters uh, that are, you know, local to each place. And then, and so then when I move people out, then I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to research a whole new setting. Um, I have to have new characters. I have to decide who's traveling with us. And it's just, it creates all these logistical problems. <laughs> but it is really fun too. And, and I think, the readers enjoy this kind of tour, you know, through different cities and, and kind of getting the vibe of different places. And for me as a writer, it's fun to get to infuse some of my own travel experiences into the story too. So do you, are these usually places you've been to or that you go to in the name of research? Um, how does that work out? Both. Um, well, Rio, for example, I had not been to Rio. Really? You write it well. Uh, but I'm fascinated with it. It's on my bucket list. I, I do hope to go one day. So I did a lot of research to try to get the vibe um, so that I could write it authentically. And um, But most of the other places I've been myself, um, one, uh, one you know episode in Recall, the second book goes to Miami. And it just, I was going to have it go someplace else that I was a little more familiar with. And my husband's like, I don't think that, you know, where the story's at right now makes sense for that place. Like, I think it should be in Miami that like, there's all this stuff going on. I'm like, yeah, you know, you might be right. 
And uh, so we ended up just flying to Miami for three days. And, and I used so much from just that quick weekend, like jamming all these different things in. Um, yeah. So it's kind of an excuse to travel. It's an excuse to, you know, kind of uh, detail some of the experiences that I've had too. It's a good excuse to travel and a business expense too, because you've got to go experience it. Right. I advocate. <laughs> you mentioned that your husband yep. um, so said that, you know, I think this should be in Miami. Do you guys bounce each, uh, ideas off each other when you're writing? Um, I know you're business partners, um, but yeah. do you also storyboard or, or discuss content together? Well, he's my first reader, so um, he's always up to date with wherever I am in my writing, um, which frustrates the heck out of him because, you know, he gets to read it in like 1,000 word increments, <laughs> and he's like, what's going to happen next? And he's like, you really would love to just read a book start to finish one of these days, um, but he gets it one tiny nugget at a time. Um, we do talk about story. Well, so, you know, I'll ask him for feedback, obviously, about things that I've already written, and um I'm a little stubborn in that I won't come to him to bounce ideas off unless I'm really super stuck. And which is sometimes often, especially in this series, you know, it's just there's so much going on. And um, he has given me a lot of good ideas though when I, when I get to that point. Um, so yeah, to, to a degree we do, but I kind of, I try to work it out in my head as much as I can first. Well, for people that follow Meredith in social media, you guys are like super cute couples. So it's wonderful to be able to think about the two of you sitting down and talking through these things and, and having a little bit of that collaborative relationship besides just the super cute photos that go on <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> yeah, we actually did our first like couple photo shoot in, when we were in Cabo which I was cursing at the time because I had to pack all this stuff and I'm like, and I'm stressed out about the photo show. I'm like, why did I do this? This is supposed to be a vacation. But um, he actually did really well and he was really comfortable and it was really fun to take so many couple shots. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, you do it for business, but you look back and you're like, it's just a memory. It's a great memory. And it's oh, one yeah. of those. Definitely. So with respect to the Red Ledger, it was a a little bit of a departure for you because I would think of the stuff you wrote before as more contemporary romance, um, mm -hmm. saucy contemporary romance, but a step into a, that faster page turn, you know, Jason Bourne type book. What made you decide to go that way? Was it just the dream or had you been feeling the pull anyway? Um, it really just had to do with this particular story demanded it. Um, and I, yeah, I think there are a lot of things that are consistent about my writing. And then there's also things that make me inconsistent as an author because I creatively get bored and I want to try new things. Um, so doing this was a bit of a departure, as you said, but the story demanded it. And it's been an incredible challenge for me um, because... <laughs> I've been joking every time I get super frustrated, which is often. Um, I'm like, I can't wait to write about feelings again. <laughs> it's so much easier. <laughs> like I have to, there's so much research with this particular series and, you know, I want everything to be right and to have a certain pace, but it's, it's been a really awesome challenge as an author to, to stretch myself and, and, you know, master that style as best as I can at this point in my career. Um, so, yeah. It, it, as I can, I can relate in the sense that when you get, it, when a story calls to you or you're feeling um, constrained by the bounds of what you were doing because you feel the need to go to something else, it's a little scary, but it also opens up all these new things. And then even when you go back to something you've done before, you're different, bigger, better, stronger, faster, you know, whatever, because of it. Absolutely. So, it's a very cool thing. So how long do you think you'll play this out, the Red, Red Ledger? Is there an end point in your mind already? Or are you just kind of going organically? Yeah, well, I have really flown by the seat of my pants on this series. And I didn't know how it was going to end. I, I don't even know what the end of any, part, any episode is going to be. Because <laughs> honestly, I may have a loose idea, but I... Um, I'm blind most of the time with this and it works out. But uh, <laughs> so with Revenge, which is the third book, 
which I'm writing right now, that will give readers a lot of closure um, on, you know, a lot of the, the conflicts that have been going on carrying right. through the series thus far. So they'll have, you know, a, a, a good feeling at the end of Revenge, but there are so many things going on. There's the Red Ledger itself, um, which contains many, many names and each name has a story. So there is definitely more story with this couple, um, but I'm hoping to give people a little bit of satisfaction with Revenge, but I do hope to be able to kind of jump back and keep telling more stories uh, with Tristan and Isabel. I, I would, I would love it. I'm sure other readers would too, because it is fun. They're sexy. It's a great premise. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, with respect to your, let's take the Hacker series, for instance, with your tech background, because as most people that can operate Google and type in Meredith Wild know, you have a tech background prior to your author endeavors. There was a more clear tie to, ah, hacker, tech background. I can really see how Meredith came up with this. But with the, the Red Ledger, is there any of Meredith and Isabel or Tristan? Or was it all just this dream? Hmm. Well, that's an interesting question. I mean, in a way, I you know, when I was thinking about the series, it's very, it's very easily about Tristan, right? Because mm -hmm. he's had this trauma and he has this sort of past. And Isabel has had a very sheltered upbringing um, up, up to the point of going to Rio, one of the most dangerous cities in the world. And I, it was one of the things that I struggled with at the beginning, uh, developing their characters, because it was really important to me that she have her own journey. Uh, obviously, I all my books have a romantic element, and you know, I want my characters to have a journey together and to grow together in their relationship. But I also want them to grow individually. So, in that way, you know, I'm I'm always kind of advocating for my heroines to, you know, be stronger, to test their boundaries, to push themselves to be empowered um, and challenged. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of a, you know, more universal theme that finds its way into my stories. Um, I would say the, the close second would probably just be the travel element. Um, yeah. Because that's, I travel a ton and uh, it's, a, it's a big part of my life now. Um, I was parked in front of a computer for 10 years, you know, figuring out websites and stuff. Uh, so now I'm, you know, jet setting a lot. So I guess, you know, I'm at a different point in my life where, where that's a factor that's made its way into the story, but I'm not an assassin. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're not. And uh, probably your family's glad. You're not, not yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the author thing doesn't work out. I don't know. I feel, I feel like pretty educated now. <laughs> exactly. You've got all the skills. Just die in to test them. Yeah. I, I um, I really got that too about Isabel that, you know, from this super, super structured background through heartbreak, through throwing herself out there and forcing herself to grow, you know, this growth to strength that um, heartbreak made her stronger and able to come back to that relationship as it is to, as a different person. Um, so favorite, any of your books, favorite book, favorite scene, favorite character, anything that just jumps out is it, that was an awesome moment. Hmm. It's like picking a favorite child. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? That answer changes, of course, the more books you write. And uh, for a long time, On My Knees was my favorite book. It's a very emotional book. It's kind of dark. Um, it's a, one of those books you either love it or you hate it, which is interesting, but it has a, you know, a, a pretty strong following. If, you know, it's a lot of people's favorites of my books. That said, uh, now that I've been writing The Red Ledger, I have to say it's the series I'm most proud of because I have just put such an intense amount of work into the series. And um, even, you know, I'm in the home stretch here with Revenge and I'm like, oh, I just want to push it over the finish line. But I'm also like thinking to myself, I got to be in this story for all these books and 
like this has just been such a great experience even though it's been hard at times um i just i'm just so proud of the series because of you know what i've invested into it so i would have to say right now it's my my front runner i i love it i love it and i mean i think that a lot of writers that are listening, writers are readers, readers are writers, a lot of the writers that are listening can really relate to this, that there are certain things that you write that come easier than others. And when you're writing the ones that are hard, sometimes you're like, oh God, this sucks. It sucks for me, it sucks for everybody. But then you look back on it and you're like, damn, you know, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it is super cool and I'm glad to hear you say that because it really it's a fun series to read and at times I feel like not only does it read I said earlier kind of like a travelogue but also kind of like a web series to me you know what I mean when you're thinking about TV series or web series or things where I get the feeling of I used to watch 24 and it's not the same premise at all but it has that feel yes. to it. It's really yeah. fast, short right. time frames. And for me, that's a big compliment because I did a lot of bicycling to 24. It was the only thing that kept <laughs> me going. So bring this to TV, Meredith. Yeah, that's, I've definitely heard that uh, comparison before and it makes sense. And I actually have in my notes, I have a, a timeline of the whole book and it is kind of like, I'm, you know, nearly finished with the third book and we're only on day like 36 right now, believe it or not. So it's like so much has happened in such a short period of time. Well, no wonder I've got that 24 feeling then. That's, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. And, and the design is the episodic design. I actually like it. It does keep the pace fast. You, you know, you have to like get through the, the story quickly, but I, I actually have grown to really like the structure, even though it's a little different. Yeah, when I started reading it, it really, it inspired me to start thinking even about what I write next because that episodic format, I've struggled with writing shorter. You know, getting a story down and trying to complete what it is I had to say and write shorter, but it's really working for you in these books. These episodes are full-fledged stories that right. fit together into bigger stories, but they're in more manageable nuggets for the reader, you know, right. and they're so fast-paced. So anyway. I like him a lot. Um, so uh, as I told you, we're not going to talk all day because that would waste your time because people, I hope you're still listening, but we see people stop listening at about 20 minutes and we've just hit it. So before we go, is there anything that we need to talk about that we haven't like your, where do people go? What's your favorite place for them to go to learn more about you? A favorite social media or your website? Where do you tend to post your most interesting stuff? Sure. Well, I am probably most active in my Facebook group, Team Wild. So that's just a group of, you know, readers and I pop in there, I do lives, I talk about the books, I do announcements and tons of giveaways and stuff in there. And uh, I spend way, way, way too much time on Instagram too. So, <laughs> <laughs> Which is where I see all your great pictures. Yeah, and Team Wild, you can just jump in there with 150,000 of your closest friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this teeny little group. It's an awesome group. It's so cool, Meredith. Um, and so if people want to know more about the books, you can find them anywhere, but go out to MeredithWild.com website. Um, check out to the um, publishing company web website, Waterhouse, because Waterhouse Press publishes many other great writers as well. And I have to ask you, if you had to choose between writing or discovering talent now that you have been finding other authors, which is more fun for you? Hmm. Well, that's an impossible question, obviously. <laughs> uh, well, I will say that, you know, writing is fundamental to me. I, I have to write now that I've started. It's, it, I think I'll write for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. But there's also, you know, an entrepreneur in me that needs to satisfy those types of business building ambitions too. And uh, so I think that those are two things that are always going to, you know, live next to each other. And um, no matter what, I'm, I'm always probably going to be, you know, coming up with some new business idea and um, publishing has been really fun. So I, I hope to stick with it. Next, you'll be running the spy agency as we talked about before, but until then, this is a really <laughs> fun <laughs> <laughs> I'll sign up. <laughs> right brain, left brain. I, it makes yeah. sense. It makes sense to me. Well, thank you so much for your 
patience for coming back on after we had trouble before and for providing all of us with your wonderful Red Ledger series and your other contemporary romances. It's been a blast, Meredith. Thank you so much. And for the rest of you out there, next week we'll be talking to Kate Kendall and be sure you're reading After You've Gone, which is her latest um, mystery. And you should probably pick up a copy of my book, Dead Pile, on Sunday and enter this ring contest before it disappears forever. So until next week, here's to great female characters, the people, authors that write them, and to you going out and reading um, another great book before we talk again. You guys take care.